Mr. President, enough is enough. Innocent Americans are dying, and you only have yourself to blame. Fulfill your oath of office, reverse your policies, end this crisis, and stop the suffering. Demon. Welcome to What Was That? I'm Gabe Sanchez. In what might be the strangest and worst GOP response to the State of the Union that I've ever seen, Senator Katie Britt left many confused and a little terrified. And now Republicans are freaking out about how bad it was. Get some medication. Katie, I haven't seen acting that bad since my wedding night. <laughs> Look, I'm not sure what to say about the GOP State of the Union response, other than it's giving Handmaid's Tale with hints of John Lovitz's master thespian. And now we bring you another page from the diary of the world's greatest actor, MAGA Thespian. I'm worried about their future, and the future of children in every corner of our nation. And that's why I invited you into our home tonight. Thank Thank All kidding aside, when I first saw Katie Britt's response, I reacted the same way that Biden did when he saw Marjorie Taylor Greene at the State of the Union. Look over here. I don't know if this was Ronald McDaniel's farewell gift to the GOP for Trump kicking her out and replacing her with Laura Trump, but I'm all for it. This whole thing was seriously so bizarre. It's like the GOP hired a consultant to fix their problem with female voters and said, Yep, that'll definitely win them over. Katie Britt delivered an emotionally exaggerated response filled with heavy breaths and sighs, punctuating her words with dramatic pauses, hand gestures, and facial expressions that made it feel like it was a really bad high school play. It's truly breathtaking. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border to see it. This is so incredibly tone deaf. She's smiling while she talks about how American families are hurting. This is just creepy and cringe. But I also want to point out that there is a glaring contradiction when it comes to her blaming Biden for the border. She was one of the U.S. senators who was involved in the bipartisan negotiations Correct. to create a border bill. Um, and she helped create the bill and then voted against it when Donald Trump called on Republicans to pull the plug on the bill that they themselves had negotiated. We have a little piece of sound from uh, President Biden's remarks tonight that got a very interesting response in the room from the lead Republican senator with whom Katie Britt worked to write the border bill. Go ahead. In November, my team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators. The result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? That conservatives got together and said it was a good bill? I'll be darned. That's amazing. That bipartisan bill would hire 1,500 more security agents and officers, 100 more immigration judges help tackle the backload of 2 million cases, 4,300 more asylum officers, and new policies so they can resolve cases in six months instead of six years now. What are you against? He says, what are you against? But you saw just before that, uh, Senator Lanford, Lankford from Mounts. Oklahoma. That's true. Yeah. He was the yes. lead Republican yeah. negotiator along with senators like Katie Britt, who just gave that long, lurid speech about the, to the, for the most part, about the border. And you saw Senator Lankford there saying, He's that's, mouthing, true. that's true. Yeah, he said, absolutely. that's true, after President Biden described what was in that bill. Again, that bill negotiated by Republicans, by conservative Republicans. They got everything they wanted. And it was Donald Trump who then called on Republicans to pull the plug on it. And what's even worse is that during Katie Britt's response, she talks about how rape is the worst thing that can happen to a woman, but then encourages Americans to vote for Donald Trump. 
a 77-year-old rapist. Also, can we just talk about the fact that on the eve of International Women's Day, they had Katie Britt deliver her response from her kitchen? Which I guess makes sense when you remember that Republican men believe that a woman's role is to be barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen. Especially Tommy Tuberville, who said that Britt was picked because she's a housewife. How do you think she did? Some chatter was that she may have been on a short list and being eyed by Trump as a potential VP. Uh, Katie Britt's... Uh performance last night in your opinion senator tuberville yeah well considering the circumstances i think i thought she did very well uh and you know she's a mom uh she's a housewife but not all republicans saw the kitchen backdrop as a smart choice the staging of this was bizarre to me um women can be both wives and mothers and also states women so to put her in a kitchen um, not in front of a podium or in the Senate chamber where she was elected after running a hard, hard fought race, I think fell very flat and was confusing to some women watching it. Um, I think that was a missed opportunity. I think her, her focus on the border, on the economy, that's what Republicans wanted to hear. The substance of her remarks, great. The staging, just very, very bizarre. Yeah. Great strategy, guys. Way to engage with suburban women to make your party relatable. It's been a minute since Joe Biden pumped gas. Uh, ran a carpool, or even pushed a grocery cart. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of us see our dollar, and we know it doesn't go as far. We see it every day. Her State of the Union response just keeps getting worse. It's like watching a train wreck. You don't want to stare, but you just can't look away. Seriously, you could cut through this awkward tension with a knife, or better yet, with a razor. And speaking of razors, I want to thank today's sponsor. Henson Shaving. Everyone knows how annoying sheep razors are. The cuts, the irritation, and sometimes you get those little ingrown hairs. You know the ones I'm talking about. It's incredibly frustrating. And don't even get me started with subscription razors. I mean, the headaches that those can cause? That's why you gotta meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they are bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble. The more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave isn't a blade problem, it's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. It gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson shaving wants to be the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. The Henson razor works with the standard dual edge blades to give you that old school shave with the benefits of new school tech. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about three to five dollars per year to replace the blades. My first shave with Henson was incredibly smooth and refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is top notch. The Henson razor is truly so much better than your run of the mill quote unquote traditional razor brand. And the affordability factor is absolutely game changing no more wasting your money on expensive blades. With Henson Shaving, you get a year of blades for $5. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit HensonShaving.com Gabe to pick the razor for you and use code Gabe and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash Gabe and use code Gabe. Katie Britt has an important question for you. Just ask yourself. Are you better off now than you were three years ago? I think she means four years ago, but either way, yes I am. President Biden has done a great job despite the GOP unwilling to help everyday Americans. We hear you and we stand with you. I know. Why do you keep whispering like this, especially when she normally talks like this. Hey y'all, Katie Britt here. I am looking forward to delivering the Republican response to the State of the Union, so tune in. See you soon. Why didn't she talk like that during the speech? It feels like the GOP had ChatGPT write this and then demanded that Britt deliver it in that creepy baby voice that Christian fundamentalist women do. God talks about a wife um, doing her husband good and not evil all the days of her life. And yes, that would be Michelle Duggar, mother of Josh Duggar, as in the guy who is now in prison for child pornography and sexually abusing children. It's so weird how all these Republican Christians keep getting caught as groomers and pedophiles. Isn't that strange? Yes, it's very strange. Josh Duggar is also linked to Speaker Mike Johnson, whose wife also does that creepy baby voice. Um, well, I know it, it goes along with the territory here, but I will say it, it 
it makes me very sad. It breaks my heart. Anyway, Katie Britt needs to ask her MAGA acting coach for a refund because her response was god-awful. It honestly feels like we're one Sarah McLaughlin song shy of an SBCA ad. For just 37 cents a day, you too can help a Republican woman in need. Be the difference you wish to see in the world. Now, over the years, we've seen some bizarre State of the Union responses, and they typically come from the GOP, and they are devastatingly bad. In 2011, Michelle Bachman gave her State of the Union response, but didn't know which camera to look into. Her eyes kept moving around like she was trying to follow the bouncing DVD logo. We wondered whether the president would cut spending, reduce the deficit, and implement real job-creating policies. Unfortunately, the president's strategy for recovery was to spend a trillion dollars on a failed stimulus program fueled by borrowed money. In 2013, Marco Rubio's response turned into a PSA on proper hydration. In the short time that I've been here in Washington, nothing has frustrated me more than false choices like the one the president laid out tonight. The choice isn't just between big government or big business. And some State of the Union responses are so bad that they can single-handedly destroy a politician's career, like Bobby Jindal in 2009. I'm Bobby Jindal. My own parents came to this country from a distant land. Well, let me tell you a story. There's a lesson in this experience, because we believe that Americans can do anything. His response video felt like some bizarro version of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Now, Katie Britt will have you believe that Katie Britt did an amazing job, or so it would seem from her Twitter account. Hey Katie, maybe next time switch to your burner account. Though I guess it's not as bad as that one time Dean Browning pretended to be a follower and tweeted that he was a black gay man. But despite how hard Katie Britt tries to convince herself and others that her response was actually good, it's not working. Into the late hours of the night, Rolling Stone was inundated, sometimes completely unprompted, with messages from longtime GOP operatives, right-leaning pollsters, conservative Capitol Hill staff, MAGA lawyers, and even some senior members of Trump's own 2024 campaign absolutely torching Brit's absurdly overdramatic rebuttal. The performance was so bad that some Republicans watched the high-profile speech with a grimace. A GOP strategist told the Daily Beast that Brit's delivery quickly became a gossip item Thursday night among operatives connected to Donald Trump. Some Thing that could even have potential implications for her consideration as a vice presidential pick on the 2024 ticket. Everyone's fucking losing it, this Republican said, requesting anonymity to discuss private conversations. It's one of our biggest disasters ever. The Democratic Party could not ask for a better GOP response to the State of the Union. It was a perfect contrast to President Biden's pro-democracy speech. Thing that happened last night refers to you saying is amped up. We're now talking about Joe Biden as too fiery, right, as too aggressive. And yesterday we were talking about Joe Biden can't find his pants. Joe Biden has dementia. Joe Biden is too old for this job. And that's how I know that it went really well because the Republicans who have been on TV, the congressmen, senators, et cetera, people who would use the age attack are now basically saying he's a, a par an aggressive partisan who's uh, maybe the coke was his, Maybe it's just Adderall. That was my right? joke. Well, you didn't tell me in the green room. I no, did. no, that's, that's, oh, that's what we're I like said. the same. Yes. Oh, <laughs> um, and you also know that it went well because last night Joe Biden's campaign smashed three fundraising records at 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, and at 11 o'clock. Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching, and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. And if you like today's episode and want to support the show, you can subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Over there, you'll get early access to episodes, bonus content, and exclusive merch. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez, and this has been... What was that?